भगवते ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेव हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जॉइनिंग अस टुडे वी वांटेड टू सीक द ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ श्री राधा माधव और श्याम सुंदर पाल के पाल गोनी का श्री गोपाल गुरु महाराज एंड असेंबल डिवोटीज um we are now concluding the um uh, study of the bhagavad gita the overview study at least um and today we will look at the second half of chapter 18 so we we've looked at these two themes how to work in renunciation and the five causes of activity uh if the word is recall recall yesterday and then krishna uh, spent quite some time on discussing according to the three modes of nature how one acts in knowledge or in accordance with nature uh, action or their where their happiness lies as well so now we want to look at two aspects two different uh, themes which are the you know, krishna speaks about the varnashram system and then he gives a final message to arjun so let's go yeah next next 40 so now 41 onwards oh just to recap actually right happiness and goodness it's like poison in the beginning nectar in the end sometimes it's lots of rules and regulations to control the mind and the senses and it's very hard because we used to the mind being totally uncontrolled and free to do anything it wants and hence we tend to try to enjoy our senses as much as we can so in the beginning it's very difficult to control the mind and control the senses but successful transcendental realization is like nectar so once we've got the control then we can awaken ourselves to self realization and that's where true happiness lies okay 41 onwards so uh riyanch would you like to read Shatiya, Ravana Shatiya's vicious and shudras are distinguished by the qualities born of the own natures in accordance with the material words which is the sort of the enemy. Text forty-two: peacefulness, self-control, austerity, purity, tolerance, tolerance, honesty, knowledge, wisdom, and religiousness. They, these are the natural qualities. these of which the brahmanas work heroism power determination resourcefulness courage in battle generosity and leadership are the natural qualities of work for the kshatriyas <laughs> farming cow production and business are the natural work for the vaishyas and for the kshatriyas there are labor and service dollars Text forty-five. By following his qualities of work, every man can become perfect. Please hear from me how this can be done. Text forty-six. We we by worship of the Lord, who is the source of all beings and is all pervading, a man can attain perfection through performing his. own work text what sir it is better to engage in one's own occupation even though one may perform it imperfectly than to accept another's occupation and perform it perfectly do this prescribe the calling to one's nature are are never affected by sinful reactions Text forty. Every endeavor is covered by some fault, just as fire is covered by smoke. Therefore, one should not give up the work born of his nature, or son of conti, even if such work is full of fault. Text forty nine. One who is self-controlled and unattached, and who disregards all material enjoyments, can obtain by practice of renunciation. the highest perfect state of freedom from reaction next 50 person of kunti 
learn from me how one how one has achieved this perfection can attain to the supreme perfectional stage brahman the stage of the highest knowledge by acting in the way i shall know somebody is text 51 to 53 being prepared by as intelligent self control in the way with the evolution giving of the objects and electrification being free from attachment and hatred while who while who lives in a secluded place who eats little who controls his body when in power of speech is always in trance and who is detached free from false ego false trend false pride lust anger and acceptance of material things free from false proprietorships a ship and peaceful such a person is certainly elevated to the position of self realization that shifty for one who is thus transcendently situated at once realizes the supreme brahman and becomes fully joyful he never he never laments or deserts the ability he is equally disposed to every living entity let state he attends pure devotional service unto me this 55 what can understand me as i am as the supreme personality of god only by devotional service and well well is full consciousness of me by such devotion he can enter into my kingdom yes in terms of the kingdom of god very good right so very powerful verses talking about bonashmi how to live in hare krishna thank you very much yes yeah. very good we are expected to be aloof and unattached workers <laughs> when in reality we have a conditioned nature influenced by the modes which implicates us in mode krishna is thus explaining the system of varnashram varna which is the four social divisions like the brahman kshatriya vaishudra and ashram are the four different spiritual orders so we have the brahmachari grahastha um, vanaprastha and sanyas that's one ashram and within one ashram one can engage one's nature of a, what we are born with in different types of works So as Brahmins, it's regarded to be intellectual class, um, the thinkers, the religionists, spiritualists, chattriyas are the army, the politicians, those who organize. Vaishya, Vaish, are the mercantile class, and then we have the shudra, who are the laborers, and all are important. Just like in our body, we have a head. arms stomach legs so in a society the brahmans are regarded to be like the head and the kshatriyas are the arms vaishya the stomach and shudra are regarded to be the legs so you now you need all the all the parts are required in order to for a body to function so in order for societies to function you need all the four divisions um and it should not be that one is better than the other no they all require they all need it one need not artificially imitate another's duty but rather embrace what is natural and inborn by engaging our nature and discharging work in a spirit of god consciousness we purify ourselves of material propensities and live a happy and peaceful life now some people think that if i'm born a brahmin i will always be a brahmin no that's not what krishna is saying krishna is saying what is your nature and according to your nature you can act if your nature is brahmanical then that's fine then you're a brahman if your nature is a shudra that's fine you're a shudra so it's not that i am born in a family of shudras and i will always be a shudra no that's not what krishna is saying krishna is saying according to karma and your nature your work and your nature if you're working like a shudra and your nature is that of a shudra 
then that's what you are. But if you are Brahman, then you have a different nature from that of a Kshatriya Vaishya It's not that one is born into a certain family and or caste or class and you remain in that class. No, it depends on your ability and your nature and your work as well. So we have to understand this Varnashram system, how it applies to us individually and collectively. Varnashram doesn't really, I mean, in the UK, it's quite a good system because according to your nature, you know, you can act. But in Bharat, sometimes you are limited. If one is a, born in a, a Shudra family, then society sometimes uh, classifies you as a Shudra. Of course, in Kali Yuga, everybody's a Shudra. <laughs> there are no Brahmins or Kshatriya Vaishya. A Brahman means that you don't work for anybody. You're not uh, earning from anybody. You're not subject to the bias of um, having to do favors for your employer. You are completely neutral and you can say things as they are. That's what a Brahman means. He's an advisor and he doesn't mince his words. He doesn't mince his advice. He gives sound advice according to the time and circumstances. So he's not in anybody's pay packet or wage. Um, Kshatriyas, however, uh, are like the kings and they take advice from the Brahmins and they give protection to the Brahmins and the Vaishnava Shudra. That's their duty, that's their nature. So Krishna is giving Arjun the final bits of information about how he has to act according to his nature. It's the final bits now. He's just giving it to him. gently. So this is um, Brahman Kshatriya. And this is text number 41. They're, they're distinguished by the qualities born of their own natures. Not, he's not saying qualities born of the families that they take birth in. <laughs> he's taking, he's saying, born of their own natures in accordance with the material modes. So this is very important to understand. Very important to understand. So I actually, if the audience don't mind, I, I'll read the final lot because there's quite a few verses here which uh, I'd like to just briefly uh, give uh, some explanation. Though engaged in all kinds of activities, my pure devotees under my protection reach the eternal imperishable abode by my grace. So Krishna is actually saying that his devotees don't even have to follow Varnashram because they are simply acting for Krishna and under his protection. So they, they have above the Varnashram system, as is Krishna himself. He's not dependent on the Varnashram system. In all activities, just depend on me and work always under my protection. In such devotional service, be fully conscious of me. If you become conscious of me, you will pass over the all obstacles of conditioned life by my grace. If, however, you do not work in such consciousness, but act through false ego not hearing me, you will be lost. So this is our position. We are lost in this material world because we're not listening to the Supreme Lord. And when we listen to him and when we work in his consciousness, work for him, um, constantly thinking of him, then we'll be guided by him. We will be protected by him. If you do not act according to my direction and do not fight, then you will be falsely directed. By your nature, you will have to be engaged in warfare. Okay, Arjun, you want to go to the forest? Yes, you will be sitting there meditating. And when you feel a little hungry, you will be asking somebody for food. And they, when they refuse you, you will pick up your Gandiva and you will Aim at them because you're a Kshatriya. By nature, you're a Kshatriya. You can't um, get rid of your nature so easily. And at that time, I will be laughing at you. <laughs> so Krishna is saying to him, you have to act according to you. You have to engage in warfare. I am advising you like this. Under illusion, you are now declining to act according to my direction but compelled by the work born of your own nature. You will act all the same, O son of Kunti. You will fight. If you don't fight in this battle, you'll fight somewhere else. But fight in this battle because it is righteous and I am guiding you. So this is the point uh, Krishna is making to Arjuna. 
The Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, O oh Arjuna. He is directing the wanderings of all living entities who are seated as on a machine made of material energy. O Sion of Bharat, surrender unto him utterly. By his grace, you will attain transcendental peace and the supreme and eternal abode. So then Krishna says, thus I have explained to you knowledge, still more confidential. Deliberate on this fully and then do what you wish to do. So Krishna is advising and then he's saying to Arjuna, I have advised you now, it's up to you. If you don't want to follow my advice, that is fine. If you want to follow my advice, that is fine as well. So Krishna is giving him the choice. And we also have a choice. We also are given that choice whether to take shelter of God or not to take shelter of God. That choice is ours. Krishna has given us that minute independence. Because you are my dear friend, I am speaking to you my supreme instruction, the most confidential knowledge of all. Hear this from me, for it is for your benefit. So these are the final, final words. These are really very, very important for us. Text 65, he repeats this. He's already spoken this verse once. And he's still say, saying it twice, more or less exactly the same verse. He spoke it in the ninth chapter. Now he's saying it again too. Always think of me. Become my devotee. Worship me. Offer your homage unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise this. I promise you this because you are my dear friend. So we are all his dear friend. We are all his children. And if we take on this, then his promise is there. We will go to him without fail. If we think of him, become his devotee, worship him, offer homage to him. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender to me, unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. Sarva Dharma Paritya. Saying, give up all different varieties of religion. Don't worry about religion. Your relationship is with me. No religion can define your relationship with me. So surrender unto me. Take shelter of me. Remember me. Think of me. And I will protect you. I will deliver you from all sinful reactions. So this is the fact. Religion can give us guidance, but it can't define your relationship with God or my relationship with God. That's unique. That is with one on one with God. So at some point, we have to simply, simply surrender unto the Lord. Don't worry too much about this religion, that religion. This confidential knowledge may never be explained to those who are not austere or devoted or engaged in devotional service, nor to one who is envious of me. For one who explains the supreme secret to the devotees, Pure devotional service is guaranteed. And at the end, he will come back to me. So this is really fantastic verse. When we share the message of the Bhagavad Gita, when we share the Bhagavad Gita, when we give the Bhagavad Gita to somebody, Krishna becomes very pleased. And he says, devotional service is guaranteed. He's giving that assurance. You will always be doing bhakti. And you will come back to me. And then the next verse is so endearing. There is no servant in this world more dear to me than he. Nor will there ever one, there ever, there will, sorry, nor will there ever be one more dear. So this is such a amazing, amazing, amazing verse. He's saying to Krishna, he's saying to Arjuna, that person who's giving this Gita to others. There's nobody more dear than that person. Why? Because this Gita takes one to Krishna. And because we're his lost children, when a lost child is sent back to his father or mother, the father and mother become very happy with that child, but they become even more happy with the person 
who brought that child, that lost child back. <laughs> so this is the situation. If we ourselves who are lost <laughs> can also manage to guide others in the right direction, then Krishna becomes pleased. I declare, number 70, I declare that who, that he who studies this conversation, sacred conversation of ours, worships me by his intelligence. This, this Bhagavad Gita, we've been through it many, many, many times, and we'll keep going through it again and again, studying it again and again, because this conversation is so important. And we are actually, by trying to study it, is worshiping him by our intelligence. One who listens with faith and without envy becomes free from simple reactions and attains the auspicious planets where the pious dwell. O oh, son of Pratha, O oh, conqueror of wealth, have you heard this with an attentive mind? Are your ignorance and illusions now dispelled? So Krishna is saying to you, have you heard properly? Hearing is so important. And Roshan replies, my dear Krishna, our infallible one, my illusion is now gone. I have regained my memory by your mercy. I am now firm and free from doubt and am prepared to act according to your instruction. I will do what you want. This is really nice. Krishna's, Krishna's saying, yeah, Arjun is saying to Krishna, I will do what you want. I have understood. And then Sanjay is in ecstasy, having Thus ha have I heard the conversation of two great souls, Krishna and Arjuna. So wonderful is that message that my hair is standing on air. By the mercy of Vyas, I've heard these most confidential talks directly from the master of all mysticism, Krishna, who was speaking personally to Arjuna. O oh, king, as I repeatedly recall this wonderful and holy dialogue between Krishna and Arjuna. I take pleasure in being thrilled at every moment. O oh, King, as I remember the wonderful form of Lord Krishna, I am struck with wonder more and more, and I rejoice again and again. So this is the thing about Bhagavad Gita. If we pick it up and we fall asleep, <laughs> that's not a good sign. <laughs> but if we have the mood of Sanjay, that this is the words of Krishna to Arjuna, and I'm relishing these words, then uh, that um, excitement, that um, enthusiasm uh, to participate in the process of understanding Krishna's instructions to Arjun elevates one. Just, just that enthusiasm, whether one has understood or not, doesn't matter. <laughs> but just the enthusiasm. I have participated in this conversation between Krishna and Arjun. Very good. We can do that today, even now, at every moment. Final verse, wherever there is Krishna, the master of all mystics, and wherever there is Arjun, the supreme archer, there will also be opulence, victory, extraordinary power and morality. That is my opinion. So that's the end of chapter uh, 18, chapter 18 in the Bhagavad Gita as well. In conclusion, all the activities, practices, and elements of spirituality are ultimately aimed at achieving pure love of God. Prema Bhakti, Prema Bhakti. The highest realization in transcendental knowledge is to reestablish one's eternal loving relationship with the Supreme Personality of God. So Srila Prabhupada, he wonderfully sums this up in his purport to 1865. The most confidential part of knowledge is that one should become a pure devotee of Krishna and always think of him and act for him. One should not become an official meditator. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, are you meditating for the sake of meditating? Not to please Krishna, but just to please myself. I am such a big devotee. I can meditate for hours and hours. That's just uh, increasing our false ego. <laughs> Life should be so molded that one will always have the chance to think of Krishna. One should always act in such a way that all his daily activities are in connection with Krishna. He should arrange his life in such a way that throughout the 24 hours, he cannot help but think of Krishna. 
And the Lord's promise is that anyone who is in such pure Krishna consciousness will certainly attain return to the abode of Krishna, where he will be engaged in the association of Krishna face to face. So that's the end of um, chapter 18 the, and, chapter, and Bhagavad Gita. There was one little thing I wanted to, oh, the lesson from this is understand the philosophy, live the philosophy, and spread the philosophy. We have to understand what Krishna has explained to Arjun. It's, it's not difficult. We have to live it. That's a little bit more harder. <laughs> to live the philosophy is a little harder because we are used to a certain way of living. And maybe we have to make some adjustments and to spread the philosophy, very easy, very, very easy to spread the philosophy. Anybody can get a Bhagavad Gita and give it to somebody. Simple as that. Don't have to uh, speak for hours and hours. Probably you will put people to sleep, sleep anyway. <laughs> because Bhagavad Gita itself is so exciting. Um, anybody who just picks it up and starts reading it, they will feel the nectar. It has made so many devotees, especially Prabhupada's. So I, <clears throat> I wanted to conclude <clears throat> with a story <clears throat> which shows the position of the pure devotee. Devotee has no other desire but to serve Krishna. And this is a little, little tough story because it questions the mood of Arjun. Okay. Once Arjun and Krishna had gone to the forest, Krishna became very hungry and thirsty. He asked Arjun to arrange some water and fruits. While Krishna rested, Arjun went in search of fruits and came across a sadhu's ashram. He went inside and he saw that the sadhu was there sharpening a very nice sword. There was also a bow and arrow. Arjun was surprised and he asked, you are a sadhu, so why do you have a sword and a bow and an arrow? This sword, the sadhu said, is meant for Draupadi and the arrow is for Arjun. Wow, Arjun started shaking sat down on the ground like a fell, fell tree, forgetting all about collecting the fruits for Krishna. He was shocked. Why? Why are you, why are you all saving these, these sword and arrows for us? In the meantime, wondering where his friend was, Krishna started looking for Arjun. Eventually, he found Arjun practically senseless in the sadhu's ash. And remember, sadhus are much more powerful than kshatriyas. And the example is uh, Vashisht compared to Vishwamitra. Okay. So he asked him, what's happened? Krishna said to Arjun, what happened? Nothing happened. He just asked me. Oh no, sorry, the Brahman, the, uh, the Sadhu, Sadhu um, Krishna asked the Sadhu, what happened? Nothing happened. He just asked me, what my weapons were for. And I told him they were to shoot Arjun and Draupadi. Krishna asked, what is the fault of Draupadi? When Draupadi took birth, she was naked, but still she disturbed Krishna <laughs> and prayed, only prayed for him to protect her chastity. She gave pain to Krishna, compelling him to manifest an endless sari. We are meant to serve Bhagwan, not disturb him for our own service. See the elevated position of the sadhu. He will never disturb Krishna. Never disturb Krishna. Never ask anything. For he just wants to serve Krishna. Even he will be struggling like anything. This is the position of the sadhu. Very, very elevated position. Extremely elevated. So then Krishna asks, what's the fault of Arjuna? What has he done wrong? The sadhu said, oh, he made Krishna his chariot driver. He told him to massage his horses, give them grass and water. Is this friendship? 
He has no respect for Bhagwan, so I should kill him. <laughs> Sadhus are disturbed because when Krishna is disturbed, they become disturbed. It's like if Arjun had to tell Krishna to go right or left on the chariot, Arjun had to kick Krishna in a, in a way that Krishna will not hear the words, but he will feel Arjun's foot hit his back and he will drive the chariot in a certain way. <laughs> so, hearing this, Arjun said to the sadhu, Oh Prabhu, you have deep love for the Lord. I was very proud considering myself to be Krishna's nearest and dearest, but I was always disturbing Krishna, asking him to do so many things for me. But I do not do anything for Krishna's happiness. And Draupadi only asked Krishna when there was a problem. Now Arjun understood the real meaning of love. <laughs> so if we want love of Godhead, this is where we have to be. It's a tough place where we don't even ask anything from the Lord. Sadhus are very merciful, however. And thus on Krishna's request, the sadhu forgave both Arjuna and Draupadi. Then Krishna gave his darshan to the sadhu and said, I came here in order to show Arjuna your love in the nature of a sadhu. Arjuna offered pranams to the sadhu and prayed, please give me the power to understand the sadhus. <laughs> Who can understand the sadhu? No one. This is a very, very powerful pastime because it shows how, how the devotee, the real devotee, the, the devotee who is unloyed servant of the Lord, he simply wants to please God and take nothing from God for himself. No protection, nothing. A very, very elevated position, extremely elevated. He'll take on all the difficulties to serve Krishna. And Prabhupada is the example. At the age of 70, he left India, Bharat, Vrindavan. <laughs> and he landed in a land where there was no such thing as God consciousness, practically speaking. They were all hippies. <laughs> and never did once did he say, Krishna, I've come in, your land, in this place due to your devotee's order to me, your, my guru's order. Do something, help me. Not once. Not once. He just served. And what happened? <laughs> so that concludes the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, to, tomorrow I was thinking we'll, we'll go through some of the lessons. that we, we, We've gone through about 75 lessons. So maybe we'll just go just refresh the so many lessons. Even if we take one lesson out of all of them, our lives will be successful. <laughs> so, uh, any questions, Naniwan? Anything you'd like to? I mean, um, uh, no, Naniwan's good. Uh, Prabhupada, anything you'd like to ask? Yes, Hare Krishna, Prabhupada. It was really interesting. <laughs> I mean, the way you were saying. But I didn't understand one thing. Why, why would Sadhu say that this arrow is to kill Arjuna and the other thing was something to do with the Draupadi and she said, he said that when Draupadi was born, she was naked. But anyway, all the babies born, they have one children. And why, why, he, why Sadhu was saying that um, uh, uh, why Draupadi asked uh, Krishna to help. And even he said, why Arjun is asking all the time, do this for me, do that for me. That's right. And who is Sadhu? Is oh. the... Yes, the Sadhu, the Sadhu, the devotee, he never wants to disturb Krishna. He knows Krishna is always busy with Radharani. <laughs> So, you never oh, so, so are you saying 
all the sadhus all over like the the sadhus from Hare Krishna they don't want to disturb Krishna uh, no, at no, all. No, no, no. Um, this is very special very 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 special we have to try to reach that high level if possible but I would say 99.999% of sadhus are interested in Krishna helping them, doing something for them. But we have to try to come to a situation where we say to Krishna, no, I just want to serve you. I don't need anything. I just want to save, do seva. That is very... And, uh, yeah, and something else also. I think, I, I mean, I, I, I can't say I think. I have got five small Bhagavad Gita's Mm. which are in Gujarati mm. and uh, somebody has given me they said just give it out to your old friends good and uh, I have asked uh, so many friends they don't want it <laughs> nobody wants yeah they they keep saying they have already got already got it. in the house and I mean I don't I don't want to throw them I no, I, no, no, I will no, no. give them someday. Yes. It will come into use to it. But Some, I mean, I've got, myself got like four Bhagavad Gita's, the one in the bigger handwriting. But yes. they're all in they're all in Gujarati. That's fine. At some point, you will find somebody. When the time is right, you will find somebody. Somebody so will. I'm, I, I'm, I said, I'll just keep it, you know. Yeah. Some day time will come. Even going to the temple is giving, they say no, no, no. <laughs> well, if you ever meet Priti, you can give it to her. He, she'll give it to me and I'll give it to somebody. <laughs> what, in, in Gujarati? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, when I see her again. Yeah, yeah, no problem. She, yeah, she's, she's really nice, I tell you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Today's, uh, um, I mean, the chapter, very interesting from yesterday. Thank you so much. Thank you for your wonderful interest and uh, consistent uh, following of the Bhagavad Gita. Very good. Thank you. All right. Uh, so let's go to... Thank you. Thank you. So... Sorry for your time. No, not at all. Very nice. Thank you for your interaction. Very useful. Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai.